Now, could ketoconazole be effective to help regrow healthy hair? Well, in this video today, we go deep into ketoconazole shampoos and whether or not it can be effective for hair care. At the end of the video, we're going to show you exactly how you can use it most effectively. So make sure to stay tuned to the very end. Hey guys, Leon here and welcome to the Hair Guard YouTube channel. On this channel, we create tons of science-backed videos all about how you can combat hair loss and regrow healthy hair. If you're new here, make sure to hit subscribe. Now, ketoconazole shampoos have become an increasingly popular way to treat hair loss. But is there actually any evidence to show it can regrow your hair? Could it even make hair loss worse over the long term? Well, this in-depth guide video that we've created for you today will take a close look at ketoconazole. And this will include its uses, how it works, and the research studies which back its claims. Now, while the results are certainly encouraging, as you will see later, we do believe at Hair God that all natural is the only way to go if you want to treat the root cause of your hair loss. Many over-the-counter hair loss products just mask the symptoms while also causing further harm down the road because they don't attack the root cause. In fact, a much better option after four, in fact, no, it's five years now of researching and experimenting is to simply use four teaspoons of apple cider vinegar to wash your hair once or twice per week. Now, in our experience, it's a bad idea to use any kind of chemicals on your head in any form. However, if you do decide that this treatment is right for you, we're also going to offer you the tips on how to use it most effectively. So exactly what we're going to go through is we're going to talk about what is ketoconazole. We're going to talk about how it works. We're going to answer whether or not it's effective. We'll look at the scientific research. We're going to talk about dandruff and seborrheic dermatitis. Then we'll talk about how to use it most effectively. We'll look at the cost and availability and we'll look at the side effects. So first guys, what is ketoconazole? It's an antifungal drug used primarily in the treatment of fungal infections. Ketoconazole was discovered in 1976 by Janssen Pharmaceutica in Belgium. Now there are a few brand names associated with this synthetic drug, such as Extina, Zologel, Ketoderm. However, the most popular brand name is Nizoral, uh, and it's well known as an antifungal and anti-dandruff agent. Now, the main mechanism by which ketoconazole operates is through its killing of fungi and yeasts. The drug stops the production of an organic molecule commonly found in fungus and yeast, ergosterol, and this interferes with the cell membrane of both organisms. With the cell membranes comprised, compromised, uh, the organisms are no longer able to reproduce. Additionally, and of particular interest to those with androgenetic alopecia, ketoconazole may also play a role in the inhibition of 5-alpha reductase. This is the enzyme responsible for the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. And dihydrotestosterone is believed to be particularly harmful to individuals with androgenetic alopecia. So is ketoconazole actually effective? As with any hair loss treatment, effectiveness will depend on a number of factors. For ketoconazole, these factors include hair loss causes and severity, as well as application frequency. Overall, ketoconazole, containing hair products, including Nizoral shampoo, are used with positive results. And this is especially true for those who suffer from dandruff and seborrheic dermatitis, and has recently proven to also be true for those with male pattern hair loss. So let's have a look at what the research has to say about ketoconazole. Fortunately for us, ketoconazole is a drug that has been studied for a number of years. This means we have a decent idea of the effects that it can have. Let's take a look at a few of the drug's most known abilities. The first is that ketoconazole cleanses the hair follicles. Now, when it comes to battling androgenetic alopecia, one of the best ways to do so is to target and remove DHT from the scalp. This is because those with androgenetic alopecia are sensitive to DHT, and this can cause irritation and miniaturization of the hair follicle. As the hair follicle miniaturizes, the hair growth cycle slows and eventually ceases completely. Ketoconazole is believed to play a role in process of hair follicle cleansing, specifically through the inhibition of 5-alpha reductase. As seen in a study performed by Rafi and Katz, ketoconazole makes an excellent addition to a number of other hair loss treatment routines. It also promotes a healthy scalp. As a continuance of the above discovery that ketoconazole shampoo is an effective treatment for seborrheic dermatitis, it seems quite obvious that this drug's use would also lend itself to a healthy and clean scalp. It's believed that ketoconazole works so well at treating seborrheic dermatitis and similar conditions due to their causes. 
Seborrheic dermatitis and dandruff are both believed to be caused by an overgrowth of the yeast Melisesia. Now with a powerful antifungal applied, however, the yeast is no longer able to reproduce or survive. Actually, the only way to treat dandruff long, uh, long term is with improvements to your diet as well as avoiding hot showers. A review study performed by Naudi and Diphorn compared the effects of ketoconazole scalp preparations on patients with different scalp conditions from a variety of previously performed studies. As the review clearly shows, ketoconazole outperformed the placebo treatment in a few ways. Most notably, it improved scaling and reduced other bothersome symptoms such as itching, redness, and dandruff. It also stimulates the growth of healthy hair. Now, while the above two benefits are certainly noteworthy, the growth of healthy hair is of biggest concern to people with androgenetic alopecia. A few studies have been performed which indicate that ketoconazole is an effective promoter of hair growth. A 2005 Japanese study was one of the first to directly study ketoconazole role in hair growth and it was performed on mice and the results were quite promising. A similar study was performed again on mice but this time compared ketoconazole to minoxidil and minoxidil with tretinoin. The mice were split into four groups each containing five and their dorsal hairs were shaped. A stain was then applied so researchers could track the growth of new non-dyed hairs and the groups were split as such. Group 1 was the control and it received 1 milliliters of 95% ethanol once daily for 6 days a week for 3 weeks. Group 2 received ketoconazole solution 2%, 0 0.1 milliliters once daily for 3 weeks. Group 3 received minoxidil solution at 5%, 0 0.1 milliliters once daily for 3 weeks. And then group 4 received equal amounts of minoxidil, tretinoin, uh, once daily for 3 weeks. Now, as results were compared after 3 weeks, it was obvious that ketoconazole, minoxidil, and the minoxidil combination were all superior to the placebo group. This was shown when comparing both the number of hair follicles as well as the mean diameter of hair follicles. Now, on the left is the control group showing insignificant growth uh, as noted by the presence of the dye. On the right is the ketoconazole treatment group showing significant growth in just three weeks time. As noted by the researchers, the positive effects of ketoconazole likely stem from its anti-androgenic properties. One thing to note here is that hair growth in mice, although an indicator of hair growth performance in humans, just doesn't translate directly over. So now guys, we're gonna have a quick look into dandruff. What's the number one scalp condition affecting millions of people each year? You guessed it, it is dandruff. This condition, characterized by itching and large white flakes, is more than just a case of dry scalp. Actually, a 2014 study found a major culprit of dandruff to be the Melisesia species of yeast. And this is crazy. There was a significant difference in Melisesia presence in people with dandruff as opposed to healthy people. But what does this have to do with ketoconazole? As mentioned previously, ketoconazole has been shown to cleanse the hair follicles and promote a healthy scalp environment. This may help to remove the yeast buildup from the scalp, which is responsible for this embarrassing condition. As mentioned in various places, uh, seborrheic dermatitis is a scalp condition characterized by inflammation, itching, scaling, redness, flaking, and overproduction of grease. This is considered a more severe form of dandruff, but is also a condition on its own. While it mainly is present on the scalp, it can spread to surrounding areas, including the ears, eyelids, neck, upper back, chest, and armpits. Now, while there's no exact cause pinpointed, it's believed that seborrheic dermatitis is dependent on a number of factors. These include age, gender, and immune system health. Unfortunately, this condition can impact the lives of sufferers in significant, sorry, significantly, both mentally and physically, and mentally, this condition can affect self-esteem and self-confidence. Physically, sufferers can experience permanent scarring and consistent irritation during flare-ups, and if left to progress long enough, can also experience hair thinning and permanent hair loss. Fortunately, when the condition is treated early enough, some of the longer term effects, such as scarring and hair loss, may be able to be avoided. So what is the most common treatment? As prescribed by doctors and endorsed by sufferers, seborrheic dermatitis is typically treated with ketoconazole containing products such as Nisoral shampoo. So how can you use ketoconazole most effectively? If you decide to add ketoconazole to your hair loss treatment plan, again, we don't actually recommend that, there are a number of other methods which you can use alongside it. Now, these methods are natural and they can further promote positive hair growth. The first thing is to inhibit the 5-alpha reductase enzyme. Now, as we can see on the right there, um, 
five alpha reductase attaches onto testosterone to create five alpha uh, sorry dihydrotestosterone DHT. Now, as a precursor to DHT, the inhibition of five alpha reductase can go a long way in preventing male pattern hair loss. Now, this can be done through topical application of proven five alpha reductase inhibitors or through oral ingestion of similarly inhibiting substances. For example, you can easily add ricey mushroom and green tea to your daily diet, or you can create a shampoo or hair growth serum that contains salt palmetto. Of course, a longer term solution is to work on alkalizing your blood and tissues, and this can be done through the consumption of an alkalizing diet and by reducing your intake of acid forming foods. You can also reduce DHT internally. Now, as mentioned above, alkalizing foods can be a great way to inhibit the activities of 5 alpha reductase. This then leads to an internal decrease in the levels of DHT and can improve the overall health of your scalp and the growth of your hair. So how much does ketoconazole actually cost? While tablets and creams are the typical prescription method, there are a few over-the-counter formulas available for purchase. These consist of shampoos, both 1 and 2%, as well as ointments. As a popular over-the-counter fungal treatment, there are a number of brands to choose from. The most common is Nizoral, and an 8-ounce bottle can typically be purchased for around $15. While this may seem a bit pricey, the product is only used a few times per week in the beginning of the treatment, and afterwards its use is intermittent. This means that the products will last a reasonable length of time. What are the side effects of using ketoconazole? As with any medication, ketoconazole has a few possible side effects that may interfere with its proper use or make continuation of its use impossible. According to the Mayo Clinic, some of the more bothersome side effects, such as itching, peeling, burning or stinging, are not a common occurrence. In the event they do occur, they may subside as your body becomes accustomed to the medication. Of course, it's recommended that you stop use if the effects begin to interfere with your daily life. As with any supplementary product, it's a good idea to consult with your physician prior to usage. This is especially true if you're currently on any prescription medications or if you have any chronic health conditions. Now, there's no doubt that ketoconazole can help significantly in the treatment of seborrheic dermatitis and dandruff and in the promotion of hair growth. This doesn't mean, however, that it's the best option available to you. Remember that seborrheic dermatitis and hair loss are conditions that are best resolved internally. Such methods will lead to longer term results and will have a number of other positive health effects too. Such a task isn't always easily undertaken, especially when you've been conditioned to survive on the typical Western diet of grains, processed sugars and lots of yeasty foods. So guys, that's what we want to share with you on ketoconazole today. Remember, it's never going to be like one thing that's just going to cure your hair loss. It's always going to take a multi-pronged approach. So remember, if you are new here, please do make sure to hit subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.